This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 837, Choosing Better Work Over More Tools, by Christopher Carter with becomingminimalist.com. And I am Dan. I'm your personal narrator and host here on the podcast, where I read to you every single day from great blogs on entrepreneurship. And with that, let's get right to the good stuff today as we optimize your life. Choosing Better Work Over More Tools by Christopher Carter with becomingminimalist.com. How much of our creativity is in our hands versus in our tools? This question comes up for me more and more often as my arsenal of music gear gets intentionally downsized or pushed out of the house by more kids. I am a former touring bassist and now dad and Kriya yogi. Music gear has always been important to me but meditation forces me to examine and pare down undesirable habits and unnecessary material goods. As a musician, my fear can sometimes be, but what if this guitar or pedal has my signature tone in it? On our best days, we remember that our tone, our art, our work resides in us, in our hands and not in our tools. Tools are important. They are a means of getting the job done. And certainly some jobs require more tools for specialized functions. NASCAR pit mechanics and painters come to mind. But artists can become overly reliant on their tools. Tennis players and golfers fidget with different rackets or clubs. Photographers believe the next lens will magically improve their photographs. And musicians are famous for masking insufficient talent beneath a mountain of gear. But the best musicians I've ever played with can sound like themselves on any instrument. Their tone shines through from their soul because they have honed their craft. He's not a friend yet, but let's consider U2's The Edge. In terms of playing style, he's incredibly minimal, yet also one of the most respected and successful guitarists in history. His parts are memorable because he uses just a few choice notes with layered effects. In the documentary, It Might Get Loud, Edge's style is contrasted with other musicians. In the opening scene, you see Jack White welding together a ramshackle guitar. In the next, you have The Edge standing in a room with hundreds of pristine guitars, amps, and processors. Both are living legends, but they have very different approaches to how they leverage their tools in creating their art. During one show in Barcelona during U2's massive 360 tour, The Edge used 21 guitars and four amps for 24 songs. But both he and his guitar tech credit only one amp as the basis for his sound. It's a 1964 Vox AC30 for any of you gearheads. What does Dallas Shue, the Edge's guitar tech for nearly 30 years, say is the true differentiator? Quote, the Vox AC30 is the basis of Edge's sound, live and in the studio. Well, aside from what's in his head and his hands and the magic he brings to what he does. End quote. Pretty interesting, coming from the most tenured guitar tech for the largest touring production in history. Edge, in the book U2 at the End of the World, had a remarkable quote. It's at the heart of what I feel so many creatives miss. Quote, Notes actually do mean something. They have power. I think of notes as being expensive. You just don't throw them around. I try to find the ones that do the best job, and that's what I use. I suppose I'm a minimalist instinctively. I don't like to be inefficient if I can get away with it. End quote. The stats and his quote speak to the paradox that exists for many of us minimalist creatives. Although he's minimalist in notes, The Edge can't cut corners on a multi-million dollar show where people are paying thousands of dollars for some seats. So how do we know when tools are improving our work or when they are making us more inefficient instead? As artists, we need to keep the quality of our work at the core of what we offer and not the tools we use to get the job done. Whenever a project makes me think I need more gear, I start mindlessly scrolling through Amazon or eBay for deals. I regain focus by asking myself a rather painful question. Am I shopping for more gear or a better performance? Marketers love to hammer our pain points, then politely offer to hold our wallet while we writhe in our inadequacy. It is not a marketer's job to care about the quality of our work. They just want to sell us more tools. It's our job to care about our work our art, or our tennis game. You want to become great and develop a signature style? Find a few tools that are ergonomically correct, then start pursuing mastery, not in the pursuit of more gear, but in the honing of your craft. Life and art rarely benefit from layering on more complexity. 
As an aspiring writer, I've stacked far too many empty moleskins in every corner of my house. That was until I heard this lyric from Paul Simon in his song, Hurricane Eye. Quote, you want to be a writer? Don't know how or when? Find a quiet place, use a humble pen. End quote. I can see now how trimming back the distractions and focusing on my craft has led to creating the art I always dreamed of. No new piece of gear or collection of fancy pens was going to ship my work. That was my job. To focus on choosing better work over more tools, I have begun to embrace the following principles when it comes to my art. One, instead of choosing more tools, choose yourself. Two, instead of investing money in the promise of better output, invest time, focus, and patience in creating your best impact. In my music, marriage, speaking career, distance running, and especially in my meditation practice, I realize there are no shortcuts. Three, tools can sometimes hack proficiency, but you can't hack mastery, period. There's only showing up and trying our best to do good work, day after day, year after year. Four, keep it stealth. Fill both sides of every page before upgrading your journal. Travel light to your writing retreats, trying to recapture simpler days before we had to stop constantly to recharge something. Don't bail on a tool at the first sight of frustration. Push through it. You may need a new tool, but maybe you just need to walk through the valley before reaching the mountaintop. Five, whenever you find yourself needing an upgrade, ask, do I really need more tools or do I need more time to hone my craft? It's important to address the root cause instead of adding more complexity that will only delay the impact you're trying to achieve. Six, pare down to the essentials. Which of your basic tools create your most high leverage output? There are some phenomenal photographers and cinematographers out there using only smartphones. Laptops may be our window to the universe, but a decent pen and a single moleskin can pull something distinctly more human out of us. A true practitioner of yoga needs only a relatively quiet place to seek the divine. Similarly, the artist in each of us may be desperately calling out for more space, not more gear. You just listened to the post titled Choosing Better Work Over More Tools by Christopher Carter with becomingminimalist.com. And big thanks to Christopher. Uh, Christopher Carter, otherwise known as KC, inspires visionary leaders to create their deepest possible impact through his work with this epic life. And also a thank you to Joshua Becker, who is the founder of Becoming Minimalist. He created a nonprofit called The Hope Effect, which is changing orphan care by providing family-based solutions. And the website I mentioned, Becoming Minimalist, is super popular. It's all about minimalism and inspiring others to pursue their greatest passions by owning fewer possessions. Joshua is also the creator of the Clutter Free app, and you can learn more about that at clutterfree.com. And because of all of his minimalism and personal development-related content, Joshua is narrated pretty frequently over on Optimal Living Daily, so definitely check out that show if you haven't already. But that's gonna do it for today. I thank you for being here, for being a subscriber to the show, and for sharing it with others when you get a chance. So have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.